We are live on Facebook Live. Uh, Highland oh. Slobotkin here. Stuart and, Winograd. Uh, yeah. And we're really having a good time, I think. Yeah, we're having a good time. I'm sure of it. And uh, we even have said it to one another. And I hope the people that are watching are also having a good time. And we intend to come to them every week at 5 p.m. on Eastern Standard Time. That's 2 p.m. Pacific Time because you're out in Seattle. And we uh, we'll be coming every Wednesday at uh, this time. And we hope that uh, what we uh, speak about together, we're having a great time. We, we hope that the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, will use our great time to encourage, strengthen, and uh, transform our listeners because that's ultimately why we're doing this. And uh, hey, you know, you don't need me to tell you and nobody needs, needs us to tell them we are living in unusual and challenging times with this coronavirus pandemic, financial crisis, uh, unrest in city streets all around America and many places around the world. And of course, our hearts go out to everyone who uh, has lost a loved one or is suffering right now uh, from the physical effects of this uh, COVID-19 virus. And so, we're uh, doing part three of embracing the shaking. We've established from the scriptures and uh, from what we both believe the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit is showing to these nice Jewish boys on, on two different coasts that uh, you know God is using this shaking to accomplish good things. God is good. And he is a loving God. God is love, the God of the Bible, the God of the Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures and the Brit HaDashah, the uh, New Covenant. He's a God of love and he's a God of mercy and kindness. So he's using the shaking to bring about good things. And, and one of the first things I think about, uh, you know, as people go through difficult times God is using these shakings to draw people to him so that as we respond, we become closer to him. We have a, a closer walk. We experience his support and comfort. So, uh, you know, maybe you can build on that a little bit for uh, people who are, who are needing to respond to God and to draw near to him to experience his his strength, his wisdom, his comfort, and so on. I'm going to say just a couple of things. First of all, it's interesting that you mentioned we were on two coasts. You're on the East Coast uh, in, in Atlanta. I'm on the West Coast in Seattle. And last night on the news, uh, Georgia and Seattle were both, were both prominent. <laughs> Because we're, you know, you asked me a couple of weeks ago if Seattle was still on the map or still a part of the United States. And uh, we are, but uh, it's we have crazy people here. And um, yeah, the people uh, leading your uh, your city, Seattle and uh, the state, I guess they don't know what's up and what's down and what's right and what's wrong. But the uh, Jewish prophet Isaiah told us for anybody who would listen, that there would be days when people would call good and good evil and evil good. And uh, we are certainly seeing uh, great manifestations of that in the days that we're living. Well, that, that's exactly right. That, that's what's happening today. And uh, so for some of us, like the other day, my wife and I were talking about what's going on. We can go like, what is happening to our country? I mean, are people just insane? Can't they see how horrible this is? Don't they know that this is corruption and this is bribery and, and, and this is fraud and slander? And I mean, they're, and they're except, you know, really what, what's happened is our society has gone so gradually downhill that it's like we've, we've been picking up momentum. You know how you start at the top of a hill and you start, I'm just thinking of, a snowball riding a bicycle and coasting down here just started rolling and the further you get down the hill the faster it becomes 
that's how I feel like we are. You know, prayer was taken out of school in 1963. The Bible was taken out of school in 1964. The McGuffey reader used to be the reader. And they used to read the Bible and Bible verses up until the early 1800s. And, and abortion was made legal. I mean, most of our listeners or watchers know what's been going on. They have some degree of, uh, of awareness. But the point is, we, we've let this happen. And the, 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 the believers who believe in God and who trust the Messiah... Uh, Christians, Messianic Jews, Catholics, we, we've allowed this to happen, really. And so we're, on, we're, we're getting toward the, the, the tail end here where we're, we're picking up speed. And things are so insane, so crazy, that the governor of New York, where, where you're from originally, uh, Andrew Cuomo, passes a bill this last January that, that allows abortion right up until birth, and they're rejoicing and shouting and having a party city. for the murder of babies. Now, I've come to a point where I call it abortion, but I want to say this is, this is child sacrifice. And we need to get serious about these things. But I'm just saying, this is how far we've come. Good is evil and evil is good. And people are rejoicing at the slaughter of unborn babies. Something is very wrong with our society. Yeah. I agree 100%. So I, I want to ask you to speak uh, to a certain kind of person out there. You know, we're both Jewish, and we have a lot of Jewish friends and, and uh, you know, Jewish acquaintances, and there's Jewish people all over America, and many of them are uh, saying, you know, what's going on? You know, where is God? Uh, what can I do? Speak to a Jewish person that's kind of seeking for answers. They already know deep down in their hearts that good is being called evil and evil good, but there just seems to be chaos and confusion. And uh, in the natural meaning in human strength and wisdom, there doesn't seem to be a great hope. You know, we can fight for, for good political leaders and you know, we can uh, raise our voices for our causes, but, you know, what about people, you know, our Jewish people who are looking for an answer, like a hope, an anchor to hang on to in the midst of everything shaking? What, what do you say to our Jewish people? I mean, what do you say to our Jewish people who are seeking for some hope and some answers? What a great question. You would come up with a great question. Hey, people so. say I'm good at questions. I'm not always good at answers. No, that. <laughs> well, you know, as as you were talking, I was thinking about my family. I have a large Jewish family. I'm the only believer in my whole family. I probably have a hundred cousins. From my mom was one of six. My dad you was mean, one of. You're the only believer that Yeshua is the Jewish Messiah, who who is Correct. hope for our people. And really the hope of the world, right? Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. and, and over the years, I've gotten into lots of discussions with my family members, you know, and, and my wife's family members as well. And she was raised Orthodox. So we have, what should I say? Um, I would say that my Jewish family, uh, I love them all. Uh, they may not think I love them all, but I, I love them all. I don't necessarily agree with a lot of the things that, they believe and that the way they live their lives but i keep coming back to the god of abraham isaac and jacob how do we know we're jewish we're jewish because we're descendant of abraham and abraham isaac and jacob and um uh, so we have roots we have common roots w what binds us together is our identity in who we are and who god made us and so it's 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 hard to it's hard to argue with people if they are of the opinion that what we think is evil, they think is good, like we were talking about a few minutes ago. Uh, I don't even want to convince them because there is no convincing. I mean, you know, every once in a while, you're going to change somebody's mind. But I think one of the things that I would like to share with uh, my Jewish friends out there and, and those who I hope will become my friends is that... <laughs> is the words of our prophets, you know, they said, turn to God, 
turn back to God, you know, teshuva, turn back to God, turn a, away from the things that God considers evil and sinful, turn back to him, and you will discover that he is a living God, he is a merciful God, and those that seek him and seek him with all of their hearts will find him. And he's an eternal God. And all your life, whether you have not believed in a God, uh, that God exists, or you have not uh, had any assurance that God is good if he does exist, he will prove himself to you personally if you sincerely seek him. And I would encourage my uh, Jewish friends, I mean, we could share a lot of prophecies and maybe we'll do that and take a little bit different turn as we're talking about embracing the shaking. I mean, everybody knows the world is shaking. Um, uh, but there are a lot of prophecies uh, uh, that speak of Messiah and Yeshua fulfills Jesus, Yeshua in Hebrew means God's salvation. He fulfills them all. And so, uh, you know, maybe we'll get into some of those prophecies. And next week, we're going to talk about Hanukkah. We can talk about some prophecies related to that. Because the Word of God, which is the Tanakh and the Brit Hadashah, the Old Testament, New Testament, is living. It's inspired by God. And God wants to use those words to speak right into your heart and mine. And so, again, for my... Jewish friends and those who I hope will become friends. And you can contact us on our Facebook, Reach Initiative International Facebook. Ask questions, make comments, be nice, be polite. If you don't agree with us, we'll be nice and be polite with you if we don't agree with you. But, uh, you know, take heed to the words of the prophets. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain because God loves you and when you return to him with all of your heart and seek him, you will find him and he will reveal himself to you and he will awaken you to this love that he has for you. And whether you're young and old, a great future on this earth. And this might sound really crazy to some of you, eternal life, life forever life forever in the olam haba, in the world to come. This is the olam hazeh, and God wants to be with us forever. That's his desire, but we need to go his way because I've discovered a long time ago, I'm not God, and he <laughs> is. I can't even give myself my next breath. So humble yourself, realize you can't even generate your next breath, and uh, that's a gift from God. And um, seek him, you know, and ask questions. Let's dialogue. And uh, again, you know, there's no question that, uh, um, that respectfully asked is a bad question. And so uh, we love and respect you, whether you believe like us or you don't. And uh, we're open to dialoguing. So, you know, Let's, let's also talk, so I hope you take that to heart, whoever's listening, but let's also talk to people who, uh, who say they believe in Yeshua, and, uh, but, you know, they've been kind of overwhelmed, uh, you know, they just stressed out and uh, overwhelmed, um, maybe they've suffered great loss, a loved one, or they themselves have been sick or are sick right now, maybe they've their business has gone under and our hearts go out to all these people. Uh, you know, relationships maybe have become strained. All of this is going on during this pandemic. Even more and more people are considering suicide. So mm -hmm. what God want, want to do for these people who believe in him but are overwhelmed and they feel really far from him, Highland, uh, what do they need to do and what does God want to do for them? Yeah, so just to back up just a little bit, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the Word of God, the Bible, because when I talk to my Jewish family about our identity, our Jewish identity, 
Um, how, how do we know we're Jewish? Because we're descendants of Abraham. What do we know about, about Abraham? It's in the Bible. So I, I'm, I always want to turn my, my family and my Jewish friends back to the Bible, whether they actually believe it's true or not. There's something, that, there's a root in every Jewish person that connects us to Abraham and therefore connects us to the Bible, because the Bible is where, how we know about Abraham. So I just wanted to mention that, that that's one of the ways that we can uh, connect with our, our heritage and also connect with the Jewish Messiah, who is, we, we, as you said, is Yeshua. Um, so people are hurting all over the place. You know, this is this COVID thing has taken its toll. I personally know of uh, three people who've committed suicide in the last, uh, well, since March. So what's that, about nine, nine, ten months now. Um, and uh, I don't, I rarely, I mean, it was so rare. I mean, I, I knew one other person maybe about 15 years ago. I don't know if I can think of any since then. And it's on the rise and people are distraught. I heard, I heard yesterday that uh, uh, elementary age kids uh, from five to 12 are talking about suicide. A five-year-old, six, six, seven, eight-year-old kid. I mean, I, I was, I was catching tadpoles in the creek when I was seven years old. You know, thinking about why should I continue living, and and the reason is because their school has been, uh, has been closed. The schools are closed. They're not learning anything. That they're, they're flunking out of their classes, which is actually happening. They're not connecting with their friends. The, I personally think the lockdown has been worse than the epidemic and it's causing havoc everywhere. Uh, there's a, I just heard about a couple of restaurant owners that are defying the governor's guidelines and they're gonna remain open. Good yeah. for them. Our governor said two weeks ago that you can't sing in church anymore. Well, that well, means I that- so good anyway, so maybe that was a good ruling. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, well, some of us know how to sing. So, so we said, we're not doing that. We're not going by the governor's guidelines. He's going too far. But p people have been really affected. This has been, this is, you know, originally I'd say this was a God-ordained timeout where, in other words, what are you making of this season? Is it drawing you away from God or is it drawing you closer to God? There it and is. And you know, the trials... You know, trials come our way for a purpose. We don't like them. Sometimes we say that's of the devil. But, you know, even God caused pestilence in the Bible. God brought plagues on, on Israel in the Bible when they were disobedient, when they, when they had rejected him, when they were worshiping other gods and idols. And so I'm not saying God caused COVID-19, but I am saying what are we doing? What are you doing in the midst of this crisis? Is it drawing you further away from God or is it drawing you to God? I, I will just say, first of all, in terms of ministry, I was licensed to the ministry in 1978. I was ordained in 1980. I've been full time for over 40 years. And I want to say that the last, well, let me think of this. So, so March um, would be three, 12. So the last nine months, almost nine months, eight and a half months, um, uh, have, have been a real challenge for me. I've worked harder. I believe I've worked harder ministry-wise than I have in any other year that I can remember. And yet I feel closer to the Lord than ever before as well. How about you, Stuart? Well, I can, I can you know... Uh... Agree, because, you know, shaking causes us to either fall apart to some degree or another, or to lean more heavily and more fully on the grace and power of God. And so uh, I made a decision early on, you know, I'm going to lean more heavily on the grace and mercy, love, and power of God. 
and God is faithful. I mean, I've been walking with the Lord 42 years. I was a crazy uh, guy in my 20s, and uh, he met me when I was 25 years old, and Yeshua came into my life and uh, poured out love. I was, I was a beloved son, first oldest in my family. Uh, my parents were great parents. They loved on us kids wonderfully, took good care of us. But when Yeshua came into my life, I mean, the reality, not religion, this relationship with the living God, when he came into my life, I experienced a love that was so much bigger than any love I had ever experienced from loving parents mm -hmm. or women or from anything else. It was just beyond, and it was a supernatural love coming from the author of true love, love that's not just romantic or emotional, love that just kind of does a wonder in someone's soul. This love that was being poured into my life by Yeshua when I was 25 years old totally changed me. And ever since then, I've come to understand and through every trial, he has confirmed that he is there for me. I remember back in 2004, we're coming up on Hanukkah, 2004, Chantal and I had the biggest Hanukkah candle in the history of our lives. Our house, we were living in Belarus. We lived there for 12 years in the former Soviet Union. And uh, we were helping Holocaust survivors and we were teaching atheists and helping drug addicts. And there was a lot of suicide and alcoholism at the time after the fall of communism because people were really disheartened and discouraged and felt they had been deceived and abused for 70 years. Uh, um, our house burnt down to the ground and most of our possessions in 2004 on the first day of Hanukkah. Wow. And, uh, you know, I had realized that uh, I had failed many of the tests of life. Maybe some of you are like that. You know, trials and tribulations come and you just kind of fall apart or you get mean and aggressive and you take it out on your loved ones. And uh, I realized I had failed often in those kinds of ways through the tough times in life. But I remember uh, the scripture that uh, you were alluding to in the book of Jacob, sometimes in modern days called James here and through the, but it's Jacob, J Yaakov, Jacob, the first chapter. And he said, consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds, mm -hmm. because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. This is the first chapter of that book, James, Jacob. And perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. So, you know, someone once said life is a series of decisions. And in, in, and in one sense of the word of of one sense of understanding life. Indeed, life is a series of decisions that we make. So me and my wife, Chantal, we made a decision on that trial. I remember saying to myself as I was seeing the flames come out of the roof of the house and understanding that it was about to go completely. I wow. said to myself, Stuart, I want you to get an A plus on this trial. And so I made a decision. I wasn't gonna ask God why, I wasn't going to complain against God. I was going to do what God said. And that was draw near to me. I will draw near to you. And you will experience my supernatural comfort and my supernatural strengthening. Mm -hmm. And we made that decision. And, uh, you know, whenever I would go back to that house and I would see it pretty much in ashes, it was, it was like a some charred bricks, but ashes, you know, like anybody, my spirit would sink as I looked at that. But then I kind of, so to speak, turned my head on the promise and, and focused on the promises of God. And I got to tell you, you know, this is a, a, a relationship. We do our part, God does his. And uh, as I turned my head to seek God and say, this is a trial, you're going to strengthen me, you're doing a good work, he did. And I felt like, uh, this is going to sound crazy to some people, but I felt like 
the fact that our house burned down and I don't wish it on anybody was one of the greatest experiences that I have ever had. Why do I say such a crazy thing? Yeah, because, you'll have to explain that. Because I experienced the supernatural grace of God in a way that I have rarely ever experienced it. And it was though Chantal and I were, we were physically wiped out, emotionally and mentally exhausted, but spiritually, that, that depth of who we are as people, the spirit man, we were soaring and we were able to stand before our congregations in Belarus and say, we're okay, thank God no one got hurt and we're fine even though we lost everything we owned pretty much. And most of our money was right there in that house as well. We're fine. Do you know why? Because our life is not hidden in things. Our life is not hidden in homes and in material things. Our life is hidden in a God who takes us through every trial and uses it for good when we draw near to him. So I want to encourage everybody out there. You know, you can go through tough times with God and his support, or you can go through tough times without God and without his support. And even if you're a believer uh, in Yeshua, you can be going through your tough times without him, not because he ran away, but because you ran away from him, so to speak. So I want to encourage you, come back, draw near to God. He will draw near to you. You know, uh, he's faithful. You may not experience him exactly the way I did and Chantal did when our house burnt down, but he's available. His grace is available. And I want to encourage you, seek him and you will find him. And how do you do that? You know, learn to get in his presence, put on some good worship music and just kind of bathe, welcome his presence and remind yourself of who he is and what he's done in your life and express some thanksgiving and praise. Complaining cuts you off from God. It cuts you off from faith and faith and thanksgiving are like your connection to him. So you don't want to lose that because it's much better to go through hard times with him and with his support than without him. He's always there, but we can be like, you know, you plug a light, a good working light into an electric outlet. That's a good working electric outlet and you got light. But if the plug of the light falls out of the outlet, you don't get light. The outlet's still good. That kind of symbolizes God in this illustration. And the plug symbolizes you and me. We got to stay plugged in. That's our job. And then we get the light, the brightness of God helping and supporting us in life. And I know if you've experienced that um, throughout your life, you and Rita, you know, whenever you've experienced trials, and he's with us in good times and in tough times, isn't he, Yeshua? So we're getting close to the end of our time here. It goes wanna, too fast. <laughs> it goes so fast. So the beginning of the verse that you shared from Yaakov, Jacob, a.k.a. James, uh, in chapter one says, count it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. Most people don't do that. You did that in a very deep way when your house burned down. And there's another verse that, that, I, that connects with that is in Hebrews 12, <clears throat> Hebrews 12, where it says, Yeshua, for the joy set before him, uh, endured the cross, despised the shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. And so because he knew there was joy post-cross, after the resurrection, after the crucifixion, he was looking to the resurrection he, um, for the joy set before him. So we don't see all oftentimes we, we, we can't see the future. We don't know what, what this trial is going to lead to. But if we can count it all joy, if we can look at the joy beyond the trial, knowing that we, too, um, will be will be closer to God, we're going to learn lessons. 
we're going to be made more complete, lacking in nothing, then then we can endure the we can endure the trial if we know there's joy afterward. That's a, it's a principle that's helped me a lot, and maybe our, our listeners as well. Um, for the joy set before you, you have a lot of joy set before you, and part of that joy is knowing that you're going to spend eternity with God, like Stuart was talking about earlier, eternal life. First time I ever heard of eternal life, I remember thinking, well, I never thought about living forever, but if I'm going to live forever and I've got to, I can decide in this life where I spend eternity, then I better take this seriously. Yeah, absolutely. And I did. Yeah, me too. And uh, hey, you know, it reminds me of a woman giving birth to a child, you know, she carries the baby for nine months. That's not so easy. And then there's labor pains. And, you know, suffering, labor pains brings forth the baby. And mm -hmm. once the baby comes forth, the pains are forgotten because the joy of this new life. And we've had four children and, and uh, we have 10 grandchildren that are already breathing the air and one more on the way. You know, oh, it man. is fantastic. And, uh, so it reminds me of that. Sometimes suffering is like that. Uh, when we relate to it properly, biblically, according to what the Word of God instructs us, then we're going to see something come out of it that's of value. You know, and a woman gives birth to a beautiful new life, a beautiful child, a boy or girl. And they are boys or girls, by the way, everybody. And, yeah, uh, right. You know, today we're confused about that, but it's the way it is. And uh, sorry, it's not old fashioned. It's just reality. And uh, so, um, uh, you know, I hope people are encouraged. I hope our Jewish friends who don't yet know the hope that we have found in Yeshua will open their hearts to God and begin to seek a little bit more diligently. I hope that our uh, friends who know Yeshua uh, but are having a hard time will take heart and take courage and to draw near to God, to make a decision, to draw near to God, to do their best, to uh, follow his instructions. And uh, I believe he will, he will take up their cause. He will help them in one way or another. And, you know, next week we're going to be back. It's uh, just before Hanukkah. And uh, we want to talk about a mystery that's hidden in Hanukkah. It's a mystery about the Jewish Messiah. We'll talk about Hanukkah like everybody else talks about Hanukkah, but we're going to add that element that, that in Hanukkah, there is a mystery revealed about the Jewish Messiah. So you don't want to miss uh, this mystery. I was like in awe when it was revealed to me. I mean, I've been celebrating Hanukkah since... Uh, since I can get presents. And that was like quick. My parents and family, they gave presents. So, you know, we love Hanukkah and we want to uh, enjoy a uh, broadcast next week, a Facebook Live next week, 5 p.m. You can find it on the Reach Initiative International site, uh, Facebook site. You can also find uh, the recordings on the Beit Tikva Seattle uh, Messianic Congregation site. That's the congregation that Rabbi Hyland leads. And you can find the recordings on the Reach Initiative International Facebook, as well as on our website, uh, reachii.org. So you can listen to these if you only caught a minute of it now, or you want to listen again. But next week, we're going to talk about Hanukkah, and we're going to talk about a mystery about the Jewish Messiah being opened up in Hanukkah. So, Hyland, would you do us uh, the kindness of just praying a blessing on, on everybody uh, out there? Yeah, I'd love to. Lord, we thank you for uh, these, uh, these programs that are being produced. Thank you for Stuart, for uh, his love for you and for his family. And Lord, I pray that all listening would have their hearts stirred up to love and good deeds, that we would be able to stimulate one another 
uh, to as, as we see the day drawing near, as, as we see the, the 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 difficult days that we live in, and then your your return, God, we know that Messiah is coming back. He's coming back uh, for his people who are serving him and loving him. And I pray, Lord, that these programs, that these Facebook Live shows would would stimulate people to love you more, to learn who you are, that we would be able to speak clearly, and that uh, many would uh, want to uh, be a part of, of your kingdom. And I want to say, Yevarechecha Adonai veYishmerecha Ya'er Adonai Panavelecha vichuneka Yisa Adonai Panavelecha Vyasem Lecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. May the Amen. Lord do it as you do your part. Remember, he has his part. You have your part. Have a blessed week. Thank you for inviting us into your lives. We'll see you next week at 5 p.m. Eastern right here on the Reach Initiative Facebook Live. And Highland, have a wonderful week. Love you, man. You too, Stuart. Love you, brother. Shalom.